I'd like to welcome all of you here and on live stream to the People's Tribunal on the Human Rights and Environmental Justice Impacts of Frack Gas Infrastructure. I'm Lakshmi Fjord of Friends of Buckingham. This event arose in direct response to the violent and racist events of August 11 and 12 in Charlottesville, in which I and many here participated as nonviolent witnesses. Virginians ask ourselves, where do we stand on the racist heritage of Virginia? How and where does racism manifest itself in present day social systems and institutions? Today, in this tribunal, one of those questions is, what direct relationship is there between the extremist racist violence perpetrated in the name of preserving Virginia's heritage in Civil War monuments that these Confederate generals explicitly didn't want, and the slow violence of locating the Atlantic Coast Pipeline's only enormous, highly toxic polluting Virginia compressor station in an 85% African American historic Freedman community of Union Hill, Buckingham, Virginia. What are the cost benefits of racism specifically and of environmental injustices more broadly. Today, together, each one of us is helping with our attention and our presence to create a safe space to listen to, to observe, and to learn from people telling their stories across West Virginia, Virginia, and North Carolina. They are people whose communities, cultural resources, and heritage lands their economic wherewithal and present clean air, water, and soil are now the resources on the roots of two new frack gas interstate pipelines, the Atlantic Coast and the Mountain Valley Pipelines. Because the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission, or FERC, issued both pipelines their certificates of use on October 13th, many people who wanted to give testimony here cannot because already surveyors are entering their lands without permission. This heightened distress felt by those present today only reinforces the need to make city space right now a sacred place, a place of shared attention and intent that's created by our thoughts and our actions. So with that in mind, please turn off and put away your phones. There will be no photography video or audio taping, except by our tribunal documentarians. Please enjoy the bounty of food at the buffet given by our generous donors, and do so in silence, as if you're on a silent retreat. Allow yourself the rare opportunity to fully become the witness, the witness for others' sakes. If you experience the pressing need to talk, please do so in the large patio area that was outside the front door as you came in. The accessible bathroom is on your left down this hall, and please access it through that hallway and not this one. Please keep an aisle in the middle open for speakers to pass up and down to the podium. What you hear and see today has its roots in pasts that have not passed. We begin and end with testimonies from Native Americans. For all lands we now cherish, including those on these pipeline routes, were once part of that diverse set of nation's lands, where their ancestors faced colonizers' appropriations and displacements of families and communities the impacts of which are still felt in discriminations that include environmental racism. With the design of this particular People's Tribunal, my hope is that the evidence given here will have maximum traction and not disappear. To ensure that, we are live streaming to our Facebook page and will keep the live stream archived on a tribunal website. We will send the entirety of this videotape, this videotape and all of yours and expanded written testimonies and the written testimonies of people that weren't able to attend, they will all go to the Permanent People's Tribunal 
on fracking as evidence for their trial that um, will happen in May. We are going to make short and longer videos of these testimonies. So in other words, our intent is for this event to make testifiers' voices as widely accessible as possible. And it's also informational to inform those new to this issue using evidence of human rights concerns and environmental injustices occurring right around us, right before our eyes. For these have largely been made invisible because of the power of the forces seeking to silence and erase them. Now I have the great pleasure of introducing you to our panel of experts who are serving as our judges. Lois Gibbs is the founder and executive director of the Center for Health, Environment, and Justice, a 36-year-old advocacy group that has helped over 15,000 grassroots groups with their struggles for justice and human rights. And let me say that this tribunal is the outcome of such a CHEJ grant to our organization, Friends of Buckingham. As a 27-year-old housewife in 1978, Lois organized her neighbors to oppose a 20,000-ton toxic chemical dump in Niagara Falls, New York, next to her child's school. She and the Love Canal Homeowners Association successfully fought Occidental Petroleum and government officials to win a major victory two years later and protect her community. Lois has received many awards for her work, including the Goldman Environmental Prize, the Heinz Award, the John Gardner Leadership Award, and in 2003, she was nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize as a result of her tireless efforts, which continue to this day. Thank you. Next, we have Dr. Adrienne Hollis. She is the Director of Federal Policy at We Act for Environmental Justice. That's the whole name. <laughs> a 30-year-old environmental justice advocacy group that works to empower and organize low-income people of color to build healthy communities for everyone. As an experienced environmental toxicologist and environmental attorney, Dr. Hollis has worked with many community organizations, building a wealth of experience in community-based participatory research on environmental justice issues. She teaches at the American University, Washington College of Law, and George Washington University, Milken Institute School of Public Health. Thank you. Dr. Jim Igo is Associate Professor of Anthropology at the University of Virginia. His work focuses on how people's experiences of their place in the world relate to nature, including in conflicts between nature conservation efforts and indigenous and local communities. He also works in community-based development issues and grassroots social movements in Tanzania, Pine Ridge, South Dakota, and New Orleans, <coughs> Louisiana. Thank you, Jim. So, at the close of the testimonies, the judges will retire uh, to another room to write their statement of opinion and recommendations. While they do this, we will be turning off all of our recordings and gather together for a facilitated next steps organizing. This is when each of you present are invited to join together and strategize in this rare opportunity and assembly of people across the geography of two pipelines and three states to together plan our collaborative actions. As part of our mission to make information about these pipeline impacts more accessible to the general public, we have organized the testimonies in the following way. They begin with representatives from each of the four cultural groups and ca who are considered environmental justice communities. And then they're followed by um, an economic overview because economic profits are why these people face all the environmental impacts that they do. So there will also be a larger and more encompassing um, environmental overview. And we ask respectfully that the testifiers keep to a strict time limit, not because we want to, but because of the huge response of people wishing to give testimonies. Please know that this is no reflection of our respect and honor for your voices, and wish we didn't have to shorten this important evidence in this setting. But remember, we are sending everything you want to these tribunals and the UN. 
It is only in the in interest of inclusion that we make these um, shortened statements. Thank you for understanding.